Roguelike games are some of the most addicting games that I've ever played. The truly great ones have so much replayability with great variety in the game, fluid gameplay that keeps you engaged for hours, and then a lot of them have tremendous difficulty enhancers that make you want to keep on playing. But most importantly, a lot of great roguelike games, they're pretty cheap. Games are becoming more and more expensive, with most AAA games being 60 US dollars. But with this current generation of games, we're starting to see them priced at $70. Games like Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, and God of War Ragnarok, they're games filled to the brim with content. And honestly, you can get $70 worth of enjoyment out of these games easily. But more often than not, you can question if a game will be worth that 60, 70, or maybe even $50 price point. But then there's roguelite games. The most expensive roguelite I've seen is Returnal on the PlayStation 5, where it's priced at $70, but you can get it for $60 on Steam. But what do you do if you don't have a PlayStation yourself, or what if you don't even have a PC? What if your main way of playing games is something portable like the Nintendo Switch? Nintendo's known for having all their first party exclusives like Mario, Zelda, Pokemon, all available on the Switch. But in reality, the eShop is filled with a lot of amazing indie games. Granted, it also has a lot of crap, but one thing that the Switch is filled with is amazing roguelike games, and all for varying prices. What we're gonna do is look at three different categories of price points with less than $10, less than $20, and then more than $20. And all of these games you will be able to buy right now on the Nintendo eShop. We're gonna look at about five games or so in each different category. Now, a lot of these games on the eShop I do own on Steam or PlayStation, but to make sure we get the best results possible, I added some money to my Nintendo account so we can be sure that the game will run good on the Nintendo Switch. Also, to make things a little bit easier, we're only going to talk about one currency, and that'll be US dollars. And to start this video off, I thought it'd be best to show off the zero to ten dollar category first. I'll be honest, this category was the hardest one to find quality roguelites in my opinion, but I think the list of games that I did find would be very much worth the pickup for the price. Let's start with Downwell. Downwell is a precision 2D platformer where you play as an unnamed character and you venture down a cavern collecting red relics and fighting cave dwelling monsters with your gun boots. It was released on the Nintendo Switch on January 31st of 2019 and you can pick this game up for a solid $3. For that price, you get to play through four floors with each floor having three levels and getting increasingly harder. Inside of the runs, you can find gems for killing enemies, and those gems can be spent on shops that you find on each level. You can also find upgrades to change your gun boots or add any extra health. And lastly, after each level, you get to pick between three items that last as buffs for the rest of your run. Honestly, I was really excited to start the video with this game. I've been eyeing this game for a little bit, and I've had some friends tell me that this is definitely worth the price for $3, and I can agree that this is a steal. Next game on this list is from a genre of games that people are pretty sick of, and that's the Vampire Survivors-esque auto shooters. We all know Vampire Survivors made this genre so popular where you collect upgrades and just kill waves and waves of enemies, but there isn't really many games like this on the Switch. They're everywhere on Steam, but Void Scrappers is an auto shooter set in space that released on the Switch on March 3rd of 2023. I'll say this game isn't as polished as Vampire Survivors, nor is the meta progression as good and the gameplay isn't as addicting, but for $3, it's still a pretty good deal. You control a ship in space and shoot an endless wave of enemies. Killing these enemies gets you scrap and the the scrap allows you to unlock an upgrade for your ship or weapons once the bar is full. You also get to fight bosses on the occasion, and every boss fight ends with you getting a weapon from them once they're defeated. You can only get hit four times before the run ends, but shields drop on occasion, which can restore one health. And to make the run tougher, enemies get stronger depending on your threat level. Once a run is done, though, you unlock credits, and those credits can make your character stronger with buffs. They're your usual buffs in these types of games, but they all seem to stay the same price. And then lastly, the game has 10 total playable characters, nine of which you need to unlock, but all have different starting buffs. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of this auto shooter genre. I enjoy some of them here and there, but it really feels like it's quantity over quality of how many games come out. But if you only have a Nintendo Switch, this seems like it's the only auto shooter available on the Switch. So I say you might as well try it out. It's definitely worth the $3 pickup. The next game on my list was going to be a game called Cave Bad, which is a $5 game that reminded me of an NES game. And the music was great, but I beat the game in my first 20 minutes of playing with a very broken run. And after that run felt like nothing had really changed. So we're gonna scrap Cave Bad, throw it in the back burner. We're gonna go buy another game called Inverium. I only found about six games total in this price range that I deemed worthy of this video. And after seven minutes of Inverium, I know, not a lot, I hated this game even more. You play as a cell and your goal is to kill four viruses in a single run. It's procedurally generated and the concept is unique, but the little tutorial screen at the beginning seems to do nothing. They want you to clear rooms before moving on to the next, but the game doesn't seem to give you any weapons. So this section of the video will have four good games worth the price and two duds that maybe you want to try out. Maybe you'll do better than me, sorry. The next roguelike that 
that gets you a good bang for your buck is Fear of Fury. It released onto the Nintendo Switch on October 18th of 2018, so it's been around for a while. And it really reminds me of Enter the Gungeon. It's a twin stick action shooter roguelike where you play as a panda who's trying to take over more planets as part of the panda empire. I didn't pay much attention to the story, to be honest. It's got 15 procedurally generated levels spread across five chapters where you collect guns, fight enemies, bosses, and collect orbs to permanently upgrade your character. It's nowhere near a perfect game, and it definitely feels off at times with controls and hitboxes and stuff like that. But for eight US dollars, if you're looking for a good twin stick shooter, you might as well try this one out. But the final game to share that's less than $10 on the eShop right now is another twin stick shooter action roguelite. And it reminds me of Enter the Gungeon again. And it's a game called Mystic Gate. Released on the Nintendo Switch on March 9th of 2023, you can pick this game up for a solid $9.99. You play as a traveler with a robot companion and take on a challenge from a mystical gate that randomly appeared on Earth. You go through five levels collecting weapons, passive items, and collecting buffs as you fight through procedurally generated rooms with each level ending in a boss fight after runs you can spend gems to permanently upgrade your character and unlock passive items it has a lot of upgrades to unlock lots of weapons to see and has a lot more fun things like unlimited ammo a quick dash to help you get out of a sticky situation and a good amount of variety mystic gate is another good bang for your buck game and all of the games listed here could be a good pickup if you have that roguelite itch on the switch i will say i believe the best game from this section is down well it's the cheapest game and the one i personally enjoyed the most but if you have a little bit more money to spend and you want some great games let's get into the list of games that are all available on the switch right now for less than 20 dollars to start this list off is one of my favorite games of all time and that's enter the gungeon i have some history with gungeon i've played it for over 100 hours on steam and i've gotten all the achievements but we're here to make sure it runs well on the switch god dang it and it runs good enough i'd say i personally notice a small difference from pc but the game still runs good enough to justify the 15 dollar purchase it came out onto the switch on December 14th, 2017. You play as one of four characters and you can unlock more, but that's for you to discover. Each character has their own starting item and weapon. You have to go through five dungeons filled with procedurally generated rooms, and each dungeon has a boss fight you need to beat if you want to move on to the next. The credits are easy to roll in this game, as if you beat the final boss once, they will roll. But let me tell you, this game has so many secrets and so much variety with weapons, items, characters, great NPCs. You'll be missing out on so much content if you quit after seeing the credits once. If you only only have a Nintendo Switch and you want the best bullet hell roguelite you can get, I say this one is it. $15 is an amazing deal for how much content you get. Hell, I paid $30 for it just so I could get the physical copy. Next, we have a game I've never played until this video, but I've always wanted to try it. And I thought, hey, good time to try it out to see if it runs well on the Switch. And that's Loop Hero. It released December 9th of 2021 on the Switch, and you play as a brave hero stuck in an endless time loop. You expedition away from your cozy camp to collect materials, and during this expedition, you go through a procedurally generated loop, and you collect mystical cards that allow you to place terrain, enemies, and buildings. You're in charge of where they go, and I love this concept. Sure, you're going in a continuous cycle, but it gets harder as time goes on, and you want to place enemies as they can drop more weapons and resources. You equip items onto your character character to power them up and give them any buffs possible. You can retreat back anytime to the hub world of the cozy camp, but if you retreat while not on the starting campfire on the loop, you will lose a lot of resources. And those resources allow you to construct buildings in your camp to help upgrade you. I only got to play the game for a little bit, but I know for a fact I'll be diving much deeper into this game very soon. It felt so fun! Don't let these graphics fool you. I view this as a must-have if you're a fan of tactical deck builders. I, I kind of view it as a tactical deck builder, maybe you won't, but I'll just say for 15 dollars you can't go wrong with this game next is another game i've never played and is another deck builder-esque with a lot of rng involved and it's dicey dungeons it released december 15th 2020 on the switch and you can pick it up for 15 us dollars just like gungeon and loop hero but in this game you play as a dice trying to win a game show and play through five worlds in a run you fight enemies to gain xp which will level you up and level one up gives you more max hp and can give you new cards for your deck the cards can be played based on dice rolls that you get and some will be locked behind certain rolls and you can only have a certain amount of cards active at once inside of runs you can also heal with apples on the overworld buy new items in shops and upgrade one card for free at an anvil the game also has six different playable characters all with different decks and potential they all seem to have different difficulty meters but they're all good fun the amount of rng and dicey dungeons could be more annoying compared to a game like enter the gungeon but this game still has a lot of charm and for 15 dollars i'll say i think it's one hell of a good deal this next game is one i personally don't enjoy that much but it's such a unique game that i had to 
add it to this video. And just because I don't like it doesn't mean you won't love it. In fact, most people love this game and it's Crypt of the Necrodancer, which released on Switch on February 1st of 2018. You may have heard of the crossover of this game, which is Cadence of Hyrule, which is a Zelda based game. But in Crypt of the Necrodancer, you play as Cadence who goes down procedurally generated dungeons and moves to the beat. It's a rhythm game and it's why I stink at it. I got no rhythm. But you play through these dungeons and face enemies, collect coins to buy items and shops, and collect diamonds, which you spend in the hub world to gain new items to find in a run. It's pretty simple in terms of gameplay, but I absolutely stink at this game. But so many people love it, I had to throw it in with how unique it is. And it's only $19.99, so it just squeezes under that $20 price range just before taxes. So I'd say try it out if you like a good challenge or rhythm games. Definitely worth the pickup. The final game we have on the $20 or less list is another challenging one, and it's another unique one, and it's Curse to Golf, a 2D pixelated golf flight where you're trying to escape through golf purgatory. You travel through 18 holes and fight multiple bosses throughout it. And after each boss victory, they give you a nice little upgrade that will help you pass through levels easier. And let me tell you, this game is so hard. I will say the biggest negative is some of the courses are very long, and if you do end up losing, you may lose your motivation to go through some of the same courses. But I still think this game is great. The ace cards in the game add some flair to it, allowing you to power up your ball for a shot in multiple different ways, like shooting multiple balls at once, changing directions, or even going through the ground. This is another game I've played on Steam and got all the achievements and played for about 20 hours. And for a $19.99 purchase, I say it's worth it. I know this $20 or less list had a lot of interesting games on it, but I was trying to keep the list very fresh with a wide variety of genres. But just in case those five games didn't tickle your fancy, I got two more games for you to check out, and that's Ravita and Wizard of Legend. I didn't buy them on Switch, but did make videos on them on this channel, and they're both available on the eShop for less than $20. Ravita has some of the most content I've ever seen in a roguelite, while Wizard of Legend has great item variety with a good challenge, but less content. But two good extra pickups. But now here we are, the final category. This category is all games that are $20 or more. I'll be honest, they're all like $25, but these are some of the best games that you can get on the Switch in general. Let's start it off with my top roguelite of 2022, and it's Rogue Legacy 2. It was released on the Nintendo Switch on November 9th of 2022. It has you travel through five different zones with each area housing a boss and being home to tougher enemies. Every time you die, you select a new heir to your throne that has different starting abilities and starting weapons depending on the class you choose. You can unlock a buttload of upgrades and classes after a run is over with gold, but they will get more expensive the more upgrades you own. I love Rogue Legacy 2 because of its insane variety in classes, weapons, and upgrades, the great difficulty enhancer options you have if you do manage to clear a run, and just the atmosphere of the game. The graphics, music, and controls are all great, and I think everyone should try this game on the Switch if you can afford it. It's typically about 25 US dollars, but can go on sale at times. Rogue Legacy 2 has so much more to offer than what I just said, but it's such a good pickup. We just have to move on to our next game which is Hades. Yep, we still gotta talk about Hades, one of the most popular roguelites of all time, along with games like Binding of Isaac. Hades released onto the Switch on September 17th, 2020. You play as Zagreus trying to escape the underworld from your father, Lord Hades. You fight through three main areas, all ending with a boss, and then fight through two to five dungeon areas before fighting Hades himself, the final boss. Really, I love Hades. It's another game I've played a good amount of on Steam, and I can notice a few graphical differences with PC compared to Switch, but the gameplay is still fantastic. Hell, I was playing the game to get footage for this video and almost want to run on my second try. But what makes Hades so amazing is the fantastic variety, difficulty enhancers, NPCs, story, music, everything. I know not everyone likes this game, but if you've never played it before, it's a must try. There's only a handful of weapons, sure, but the aspects that change the benefit of the weapons and then the boons adding buffs to the weapons, you really have an endless amount of variety that makes almost every run so fun. The skill progression is expertly done like Rogue Legacy 2, with your darkness currency, which allows you to upgrade the mirror in your room to give you buffs for your run. You probably knew this game was coming, but if you're talking about a collection of the best roguelites on a system, you have to include Hades if it's there. I personally love Hades, and if you've never tried it, I'm sure you will too. For the price of $24.99, you can get hundreds of hours of content. These $20 or more games are all so good, and the next one's another fantastic game, and it's Dead Cells. I will say Dead Cells may have some of the most content out of all these games, but does have a lot of DLC that cost extra money. But the base game is $24.99. You play as a dead prisoner whose head never dies, but every death you wound up in a new body. Your goal is to kill the king, and you travel through multiple levels, with each level having more difficult enemies. A typical run can take you about 45 minutes to an hour, depending on your 
pace. While making this video, I was able to clear the game in one run in about an hour, but I've played a lot of Dead Cells on PC and Xbox, and really, there wasn't much of a difference. The Switch version had some stutters occasionally, which would cause me to get hit once, but other than that, it was perfect. I love Dead Cells because of its fantastic variety and the way you unlock new items. Throughout the levels, you collect cells, which you can use to unlock new items that you find, permanent upgrades, or outfits between the levels. But if you die with cells in your inventory, then they're gone for good. There's so much more inside of a run with the upgrade system with how each weapon has its own color that correlate what type of build it will be. The colors are red for brutality, purple for tactics, and green for survival. And then along with weapons having those colors, you also have mutations that relate to the same colors. Mutations act as buffs for the run, and you get three total each time, and you choose them after each level. The combat, gameplay, and item variety make this game an easy S tier for me, but I will say I'm not the biggest fan of how Dead Cells implements difficulty enhancers with boss cells. You basically get a lot less healing for each boss cell, but enemies get stronger and weapon upgrades cost more. It's still fun as I got to the fourth boss cell on PC out of five. The difficulty enhancers shouldn't turn you away from this game. Even without paying for all the DLC, the $24.99 price tag is more than worth it. And if you ever run out of content, there's like four things of DLC you can buy. It's great. Next, we have one of the most well-known roguelites of all time. Definitely the most popular deck building roguelite I've ever seen. And it's Slay the Spire. It released onto the Switch on June 6th of 2019. And Slay the Spire is one of those games where I don't even know where to begin on how to explain it. You can choose one of four characters and you travel through multiple acts, fighting enemies, collecting golds, relics, and cards. And the gold can be used on merchants to buy potions or more cards. You want to build the best deck possible and every character has a different set of cards associated with them. This is one of those games I wish I could play more of, just never had the time yet, but it's so innovative and incredibly addicting that any roguelite fan should give it a try. And if you're a fan of card games, you really need to try it out. It has so much variety with relics, potions, endless possibilities with decks to build, and really good difficulty enhancers. Like all other titles in this section, it's $24.99 and you can easily sink well over 100 hours into this deck build and masterpiece. I wish I could say more about Slay the Spire, but I've only played it for about 25 hours total here and there compared to all these other games in this section for like 50 plus hours, 100 hours. But Slay the Spire, fantastic game. Now it's time for the final game to talk about. And I didn't plan this, but it's one of my favorite games of all time and it's Darkest Dungeon. I've played this game a lot on my PC and have beat it multiple times. But my first time playing the game was on Nintendo Switch and it took me almost 90 hours to complete my first run. Granted, a Darkest Dungeon campaign is quite long. It was released January 18th, 2018 on the Switch and I will say the controls on a controller are much harder compared to a mouse and keyboard. But once you do learn everything, it's pretty easy. You take a group of four heroes into different dungeons and engage in a turn-based combat system that involves you managing party members moveset, making sure their position in battle lines up with their moves, their stress levels, and their health bar. The game has 15 characters in the base game and two available via DLC. And every character is better in different areas. Some are good with healing, some are more powerful, some specialize in stress healing. You need to learn the moves and figure out which combo of characters will be good to bring in different areas. I personally love this game and always suggest it to anybody looking for a fun time. Granted, it is extremely unforgiving and has a lot of RNG involved and just takes a long time. But if if you're craving a gothic turn-based RPG with a challenge, this is a game for you. Every time I pick this game up, it's almost impossible to put down until I beat the campaign. And just in case you didn't like those five games, I'll give you a few more quick ones that I think are well worth the price on Nintendo Switch. The most recent release on the Switch was Have a Nice Death, which is a fun action-adventure platform and roguelite. And then of course we have Cult of the Lamb, a fantastic single-player adventure where you recruit other animals to join your cult, and then embark on an adventure to scavenge materials and spread the word of your cult. And then lastly, if you're looking for a good co-op game you can pick up Risk of Rain 2, a third-person shooter roguelite that does have multiplayer options, and it has so much item variety and a lot of different characters to unlock. All of those games will be a fantastic addition to your Switch game collection trust me. And that's it. Those are some amazing roguelites that you can buy on the Nintendo Switch. This little thing may not be too powerful and may struggle here and there, but it has some amazing roguelites on it, and it's always good to pick them up, and being able to play them on the go, that's always a nice little bonus. I know there's definitely a lot more amazing roguelites on the Switch, but I did feel like those were all some of the best you could get for their respectful prices. Let me know what your favorite roguelite on the Switch is, and if this video helped you find any. And if you ever want to see me play some games live, you can watch me on Twitch. Thanks for watching and supporting. As always, make sure you like and subscribe. I guess if you liked it, subbing always helps the channel. And I'm sorry for the inconsistencies on YouTube. We're currently in the process of moving to a new province in Canada. So life's just a little busy at the moment. Haven't had enough time to work on YouTube. But I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.